Welcome to the Mavens Do It Better podcast. And now, your host, Heather Newman. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Mavens Do It Better podcast, where we interview extraordinary experts who bring a light to our world. And I couldn't be more excited to have one of those lights on today, Tony Fitzpatrick, who is... Hey. (laughs) Hey, Tony, where are you coming to us from today? I love love the background there that I'm looking at. Well, she's my studio in Chicago. Um, Yeah. My uh, uh, my wife and my grown children invited me to uh, break the quarantine and go back to work. You know, because uh, <laughs> you know, sixty days locked down with me in uh, one house uh, is you know it's a it's a mixed blessing. You know, so, <laughs> sure. um, so, you know. I also figured there's nobody in the studio. Yeah, it's like you know, I'm not getting me sick. Nobody's going to get me sick and. You know, the minute I walk out the door, I have a mask on. I practice social distancing. And, yep. and you know, I, I, I'm lucky that we have uh, a mayor and a governor that, that take all of this very seriously. And yeah. I, I honestly yeah. think they've saved lives. I agree. I think Governor Minister and, and Mayor Lightfoot, who I adore, uh, have gone way out of their way to try and keep people safe. And, yeah. um you know, that's refreshing. It's not always been that way in this city. Yeah, sure. I remember our last mayor uh, was a little short guy who had to stand on a box to kick a duck in the ass. Uh, <laughs> that was Rahm Emanuel, um, who I just thought was the worst thing that ever happened in Chicago. Yeah. And the governor before uh, Governor Pritzker was this, uh, you know, Trump type named Bruce Warner. And luckily, those two assholes are gone. You know, and uh, we've got humane, uh, decent leadership mm-hmm. in the face of, you know, I mean, uh, I've been keeping a diary about this thing. And, uh, you know, I wish it had some direction, but I just don't know what's next. And I don't think anybody does. So, yeah, I agree with you. And you've been exploring that on your podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. Me and my son, uh, the Max and Tony show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my son's an actor, and you know, I mean, he's obviously out of work right now because uh, sure, uh, all production was shut down. He fin- he finished something right before uh, all of this went into effect. You know, a pilot called uh, the Gray Market, and uh, uh, so you know, we're we're both kind of uh, antsy, just to kind of figure out uh, you know what the future holds. You know, yeah. Yeah, um, I think we're all kind of antsy right now, right? I mean, oh, no, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, for sure. That, and that's have you done something like do you work with your son on art projects like that? Have you done something like that before? Or? Um, this is the first time we collaborated on uh anything like podcasts, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. we, we've been in uh, we've been in the same movie, uh, we didn't work in the same scene together, but um, oh, wow. uh, we both uh, worked, shot a film last year called Dreaming Grand Avenue. That shot here in Chicago, that was an indie thing. And um, uh, we're, you know, we're looking forward to finding something we can do together eventually, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it's a, you know, I mean, it's a, right now it's all up in the air. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't know of anybody that's going back to the production this calendar year. I mean, I think right. maybe some of the TV stuff, but uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I just stay busy working in my studio. I, I have a new book coming out in uh, Nepal. Oh yeah, called, what's uh, Jesus of Western Avenue. Say it one more time. Jesus of Western Avenue. Oh, okay. What's that about? Yeah, it's not a religious book either. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, short stories, essays, uh, art, and this diary about the the COVID nineteen wow. pandemic. You know, wow. I was finishing the book, and the quarantine happened. And I thought, well, you know, the book isn't completely locked yet, and it's not like you can ignore the subject. I mean, it's like a right. five hundred 
pound gorilla sitting in the living room. You have to talk about it, you know? Yep. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. yeah and I started a, a puzzle company since uh, I no longer had an income. Yeah. And, you know, I, uh, so, uh, Alison Gerlach, who's a good friend of mine, Chicago gal in the in Burning Man and all of that scene, she was like, you got to look at Tony's stuff. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, you know you're a, gosh, you're a visual well, artist. She's, right. Right. And she's hooked up with a really wonderful artist named Steve Walters. You know? Yes. I love Steve Walters. Beautiful printmaker and graphic yeah. designer. That's yeah. Yeah. For years and years, for, you know, like concert buses and stuff. Um, the things that really identified out of the Chicago music scene, it was Steve Walters and, you know, Jay Ryan, you know, I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're really guys. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He made a beautiful poster for, he makes all kinds of beautiful posters, but he made a beautiful one for Allison's 50th birthday that just happened. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was super you know, happy. I mean, he, he found so much possibility in silk screen art. You know, um, mm -hmm. really, kind of, really kind of took it somewhere. I mean, Screwball kind of kicked the door open for that whole uh, that whole genre of artists. You know, yeah. I mean, it made it all possible. Right, for sure. Screwball Press, everyone is Steve Walters' company. Yeah, Chicago, right? Yep, Chicago mm -hmm. and local, all that. Yeah, super mm -hmm. cool. And you know, you gosh, you. You also have uh, is the the you have the dime as well. I want to talk about puzzles. I want to talk about the dime. I want to hear all about all this oh. goodness that you're that you've got going on. I mean, um, and and the, the dime is a gallery for for new artists um, that you help. Yeah, we don't, we don't take a percentage of sales. Okay, and because of that structure, I don't know that we'll be able to reopen. I mean, I, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we have the legs to weather all this. Um, right, right. I mean, I will, you know, we will come back with some some iteration of an exhibition space because uh, right. I've been doing that for 35 years. I have World Tattoo. I had uh, uh, Big Cat Press. I mean, I've had lots of galleries. I always try to open a door for other artists who, you know, not had a lot of shine on them yet. You know? Right, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for doing that. You know, that's a big deal. Somebody did it for me, you know. Yeah, and that's right. uh yeah, you gotta you got you know, you got to get to the top of the mountain. You gotta pull out a hand and pull the next person up. Right on. Right that, on. Uh, that's from a poem by Mark Smith, uh, who founded the Uptown Poetry Center. Oh, okay. And yeah. the first time I ever heard him read that, I thought it's been in my head like a BB in a box car. It's like that's one of those things you you hold fast to. And uh, I, I think what's going to save uh, the the art scene, the art community, is uh, the best assets we have are each other. Yeah. And yeah. We, we're learning, we're relearning how to be a community right now. Um, don't go looking for art dealers to save you. You know, I mean, they, they you know. Uh, the institutions are not of much help when it comes to stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, and they're, and they're having trouble too, right? I mean, so you know, they, they're having trouble too. They can't sustain this kind of thing. Yeah, either. exactly. I mean, the, yeah. I mean, all things. Uh, well, not the commercial art world, not the dealers. Well, but sure, the, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Profit usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, um, I, we were talking about your stuff on your, face, on your show. <laughs> you know what? It's all good. I'm having a cup of coffee, in my Darth Vader mug. It's all good. So, you know, um, yeah, I, uh, we were saying I, I grew up in Wheaton and we were talking about where we were from and where, where did you, where did you, so Lombard, did you grow up there? No, no, um, well, eventually I do. Oh, okay. Where were you? Then, uh, uh, then, you know, uh, I became a suburban refugee, you know, it's like, uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, Lombard and Villa Park and, uh, I, you know, got kicked out of my share of schools and, um, I, uh, there were things about 
that geography that I kind of like. There is restaurants called Cock Robin. Do you remember those? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, for sure. There was one. Yeah. yeah. You get a rainbow sherbet tone, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, like colored sherbet on a yeah on a cake, you know. And, yeah. You know, burgers that I'm sure were no goddamn good for you, but God, I love them. You know. Uh -huh. Yep. And, uh, and out by you is the the Cascade Drive-in, right? Oh yeah, right. You know, I've forgotten the name of that place, but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Wow. I, you know, I love the Cascade Drive-in. I love the Sky High Drive-in at uh, 53 in North Avenue. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where I became acquainted with female anatomy. You know, I mean. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there were things to like about it. I mean, there was there was something uh, kind of sweet and then naive about small town America back then. You know, and then mm -hmm. uh, you realized that it was kind of uh, a bubble. You know, it was kind yeah. of uh, everybody looked at just like you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like me. Uh, yeah. Right. You began to notice the inequity that, that surrounded you that was just mm -hmm. sometimes just a couple miles away, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's bubbles, so many bub <laughs> bubbles yeah. in different ways, right? Yeah, that show off our non diversity or our the inequities or all, just our differences, you know, for sure. Um, Where do you live now? I'm in Marina Del Rey in Los Angeles, so I've been on the West Coast. Oh, you know all about good food. <laughs> yes, I do. I do for sure. Yeah, there's great Mexican food here. There's great all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I've been West Coast since about 1990. I was in Seattle and then Sonoma County, and now down oh, here. Wow. Yeah, yep, yeah. Uh, you, you ever go a loser? Mm. A loser. Day or uh -uh. Cool art gallery I used to show at. It's in uh, West Hollywood. Okay, um, I'll go check that out when, uh, you know, when we can. The store that has a big sign that says Wacko. Oh, that sounds kind of familiar. I'm still semi new to LA, so I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning this place. I've only been here a couple of years. So, yeah. I, did. I think maybe they're in Los Feliz. No. Los Feliz? Okay. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Um, yeah, and I'm curious. So, tell us about. So you know you're a, you're a visual artist, and I, and I was looking, I was poking around your website, as I'm apt to do when I'm doing my research, and I was looking, and the, I mean, obviously you 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 have um, your work is all over the world. I mean, it's in the Art Institute of Chicago, which is one of my favorite places in the entire world, because I would borrow the car and pretend I was going to the mall when I was 16 and I would drive into and Chicago. Downtown. Good and, job. Yes, and I would go yes. to the Art Institute. <laughs> Absolutely, here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you yeah, I'm in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I'm in the uh, Museum of Modern Art. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been really, uh, I've been really fortunate. I've been uh, really lucky in that, uh, my work struck a certain nerve, you know, yeah. and um, so I started making a living in uh, 1986. Okay. Yeah. Uh, never done anything other than make art or act or, or write. Right. Um, Wonderful. Ever since, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've enjoyed, especially in the last few years, some institutional, you know, embrace, you know. Yeah, which, sure. Uh, sure. Well, for the long time, you know, didn't happen, you know. Right. Uh, but, yeah, it's nice. It's nice, you know. I mean, when you're 61, you, you do know that you're uh, entering, you know, what is the autumn of your lifetime, you know. So, um, you don't. I I have a museum show in uh October. Okay. It's at uh, the Cleve Kearney uh, Museum of Art at the College of DuPage, which oh. is right by where yeah. we grew up. And, yeah. Um, I took it because I knew the guy it's named for. When he was alive, he was one of my collectors and he was, he was a great guy, you know, he's a really fun human being. Um huh. 
when I was a teenager, I used to caddy at Glen Oak Country Club. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah, you know where that is, right? Yep. Uh -huh. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I caddied for this kind of stern, uh, serious older guy named uh, Mark Carney. Mm. And he said, well, what do you want to do with yourself? Because, you know, I was like your typical, you know, weirdo kid. I had, you know, long hair. I smoked on the golf course, and, you know, <laughs> wouldn't wear shoes. Right. So, well, I want to be an artist. He goes, oh, God, my kid's into that, too, you know. <laughs> His son just finished uh, law school a few years uh, earlier, and he, uh, a couple of weeks later, I get in for him again. His son was in the force, and I got to talk to this guy, and that was clear. Right. And um, uh, he was he was he was nothing like his father. He he was fun. Mm -hmm. He liked food and mm -hmm. wine and music and art and you know. Um, uh, I mean, Cleve was uh, was something in nature. He was a pond of otters. I mean, this guy liked <laughs> to have a good time. Like, right. And. Uh, and he, he was always lovely to me, you know, so um, mm. I just decided, you know, I'm going to have uh, my final museum show. Right. You know, I only have to do this one more time, you know, and mm. uh, and that's a good time to pull the pin. I mean, I'm still going to come to my studio and make things every day. Sure. That's a part of the job that I love. And if people want what I do, they know where I am, you know. Yep. yep. Uh, yep. As far as like the career ladder thing, you know, um, I'm finished. You know, those kind of ambitions just drift away, you know, like leaves in a river, you know. Yeah. So <clears throat> I got other stuff to do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I don't know. I think it's, you go through waves and I don't know, like a friend, my friend Louie, we always talk about the book of your life, right? And what chapter are you in? What page are you yeah. writing? What page do you have to reread because you didn't learn the thing the first time? You got to go back a chapter. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've dog eared all of those pages. Man. That, that's an ongoing dilemma. Um, <laughs> I just don't want to think there's a lot more behind me than there is ahead of me. I had a quadruple bot test five years ago. Wow. Okay. And, uh, I learned, uh, the one thing I've learned is that it all matters now. You know, yeah. uh, each page, each moment, each each thing you do, each thing you put in the world, it all matters, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I try to keep that in front of me, you know? Um, uh, <clears throat> I love working on a podcast with my son. Yeah. Um, and my daughter's a marvelous writer. And, you know, what's amazing is that I, I like kind of being around them more than I like being around most people because... <laughs> They're half your age, they, everything that they do and they think is not hardened into doctrine. Right. You know, people my age, uh, they tend to suffer from this, this, this vanity problem of liking what they know way too much. Right. And one thing I've learned from my kids is that it's all got to be fluid, you know. Um, I mean, they're, in a way, they're lucky and they're cursed in that they grew up with the Internet, you know. Uh, and I mean, you, you witnessed my computer skills, right? I mean, I'm like <laughs> practically Amish, you know? So, uh, you know, they, they challenge me and they make me, they make me think. Yeah. Uh, my daughter uh, went to uh, uh, university in Rome. You know, she went to uh, John Cabot University in Rome and then before that American University in Florence. So she speaks another language fluently, and she spent, you know, six years in Europe. And she's, she's got this longer view of, of uh, the American body politic than I do, who's lived inside of it you know, his whole life. And uh, so we, we talk about things that, uh, uh, that I think matter, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, they school me. I mean, my... Um, me and my son are designing a line of apparel right now. Wonderful. And okay. you know, we did it once before for a really cool company called uh, uh, St. Alfred here in Chicago. They make streetwear and uh -huh. skater wear and stuff like that. And um, 
I found out these guys, you know, kind of liked what I did. And my son made this connection with him. And we made a line of clothing uh, three years ago. And uh, just decided to, you know, kickstart it and, you know, uh, we made that idea. And right. Um, right. Uh, what's great about it is that it's exposing me to all kinds of stuff I didn't would not otherwise know. Sure. You know, so I mean, the, the, the benefit of working with people half your age is that not everything that they think is hardened into dogma yet. Yeah. And yeah. see some of my contemporaries and some of my friends, <clears throat> they have, like, you know, every single thing they think uh, sometimes is impervious to change. And I think that's. Yeah. I think that's lethal. You know, I think yeah. that, I think that's the uh, uh, I think curiosity keeps you alive and keeps you moving forward. You know, mm -hmm. I agree with you 100 percent. Yeah, I have a really strong relationship with both of my parents and then also people that I work with. I work with a lot of folks that are, you know, way younger than me as well. And I, I, I love the perspective across generations, especially when. Absolutely. When you each other so I mean everybody who's ever gone through the studio was usually a student or, or, or somebody who was you know 21 22 yeah. years old and uh, the perspective that they have I'm usually not privy to so it's an interesting thing to learn about um, yeah. I mean particularly how, how the ideas of like having an education has changed I mean a great many of uh, the younger people I know are still carrying around an, an immense load of college debt, you know, and uh, school loans and uh -huh. all that horse shit. Um, yep. I just think it's an incredibly inequitable uh, thing. It's, a, it's how the wealthy keep, uh, you know, a, a struggling working class uh, at their beck and call, you know. Yeah. Well, especially when it's it's a requirement, right? If if certain businesses say, you know, we won't even look at you unless you have a college degree. Well, that's a barrier to entry, right? For many positions. I've been offered, I've been offered teaching jobs and I barely got out of high school. <laughs> right. You know, and uh, yeah. I wouldn't pay I wouldn't take them A that I won't take the pay cut. B um you know, somebody went to school for like a master's degree to get a job that pays them in fucking bottle caps and coupons, you know. Uh -huh. I, I'm not going to steal that person's job. Right. I just think that, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a statistical aberration. I didn't come up through art school. You know, I, right. uh, so um, I, I count myself as very fortunate. Yeah. But, um, it's about being, it's about being grateful too, right? I mean, it's grateful oh, for the I people mean, that have given you a hand, that have helped, who have said yes. Yeah, I, mean, you know, I had somebody tell me, "Well, you're a great example of a self-made person." It's like I am not. Mm -hmm. I mean, more people gave me a break. More people opened doors for me. More people gave me opportunities. Yep. And I had a mother who, no matter what horrible incarnation I was going through personally, never believed that I was going to uh, wind up on the curb, you know? Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm the beneficiary of uh, so much human goodwill. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what formed me. Yeah. You know? I'm with you hundred sure. percent, you know, I, and I, 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 people, you know, cause I've lived on the West coast a long time, which I love, you know, people were like, where are you from? Are you from here? And I'm like, I always put my hand up and show the mitten. Right. Cause I was born in Michigan and, uh, oh, really? yeah, okay. yeah. I was born in Muskegon and my family's from uh, Bay city and Elma. Oh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like, you know, my parents with their work ethic, my grandparents, all of that, you know, like I, my parents encouraged me as well. And they're, you know, and, and, and the, the right. community. Oh. You know? uh, the podcast I'm on, Heather's from Michigan. Oh, beautiful. Hey, is that Max? He's very Michigan. No, no, no. This is Owen. He works oh. in the studio. Oh, hey, Owen. Okay. Hi. Nice to see you. I've been uh -huh. seeing you in the background doing your thing. <laughs> 
Max, uh, Max runs the, the other gallery in the building, which is called Adventure Lab. Oh, okay. And, uh, cool. And he uh, uh, runs that gallery. I run the dime. And, you know, we're, I mean, we're both in limbo right now. We don't know what's going to happen. And, uh, yeah. You know, we're hoping, we're hoping that we can eventually resume an exhibition schedule. But, yeah. You know, until there's something, until there's something resembling a curative for this. Yeah. I would feel awful if somebody came to my place and, and became sick. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't know that I could live with myself. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and you know, I th the, the, so what, so I know that, you know, your wife and your kids were really pushing you and you all sort of came up with the puzzles together and yeah. I looked on your website and they're like all sold out and what, what's going on. Tell us about yeah. the, you know, I got kind of flat footed. I didn't realize I underestimated the, the appetite for puzzles. We, we have a whole bunch more coming Great. in the next couple. You know, yeah. Um, I mean, this time we decided we're not you, we're not going to get fucked over, and you know, uh, I didn't order enough, so mm. this time we ordered uh, thousands of them, and okay. they'll be out in a couple of weeks, and yeah. um, they'll be available. You know, uh, but yeah, who knew? I mean, people really, really love puzzles. You know. Um, yeah, where where were you seeing that? Like, did you was it that you social media or like did a friend or like what's how did how did the how did the idea? Oh, my wife kept telling me, you know, your work would be good for jigsaw puzzles. Hmm. Yeah. And I think about it, and then you know, the moment would pass, and I'd forget about it for a while. Right. When this whole thing started, I was sitting in Humboldt Park. Um, because I'm a heart patient, I used to go swim every morning. Okay. And the club I'm a member of, you know, shut down. Um, so I go and I walk around the north part of the lagoon in, uh, in Humboldt. And mm -hmm. um, uh, I was sitting down on a bench and I realized, uh, wow, I no longer have an income, you know. Mm -hmm. right. And I better think of something. So... I picked, you know, four images. We made a few hundred puzzles, and they sold out in like sixteen minutes. Wow! So we ordered a bunch more and uh, more new images, and uh, mm -hmm. they sold out damn near as fast. And then I thought, I'm just not ordering enough goddamn puzzles, you know. <laughs> so, um, luckily, my wife does the grown-up work, like the business, and they, uh -huh. you know, trademarking, sure. copyright all that um i'm no good at filling shit out i don't like it you know and mm -hmm. uh and my son luckily has uh, a savvy for social media um uh -huh. and i think he learned it because he grew up in the age of the internet when the really hip skate shops and stuff would drop a limited edition of a shoe or a yeah. cool right. shirt or a hoodie mm -hmm. you know he was always it's Supreme and St. Alfred and um, yeah. Rice, you know, these, and, and they had a very uh, sound marketing strategy, which is uh, work on the internet, work on the social media and the platforms. And, Absolutely. You know, I mean, you know, I'm practically Amish, you know, I mean, I, I don't really understand that. And he understands it intuitively. Right. And um, so he's guiding us through that. And uh, my daughter is, uh, you know, helps by being, you know, uh, the conscience of it and saying, look, this is what will engage people. This is what will, you know, lift them up. Sure. I read this great article about how jigsaw puzzles help people engage mentally, um, de-stress, mm -hmm. and actually indulge in problem solving. Sure. And. I thought, you know, anything to take people's mind off this shit, if only for a few hours. Uh, Amen. Maybe. Absolutely. Just, you know, I, I was I was reading a couple of different articles, and uh, we have a share. A, a, we have a lot of we have a lot of things in common from you know being from sim, similar place and stuff. But we also have a shared love of a singer. Um, Any love. Uh, well, no, I do love Annie Lennox, but who I love. Oh, are you a Steve Rolfe fan? No, I know John Boutet. 
Oh God, he's my oh. favorite singer in the world. It's uh, you know mine, what, mine as well. Mine, mine as well. I yeah. I made this one drawing because he uh, did a cover of uh, A Thousand Beautiful Things by Annie Lennox. Yes, absolutely. The most beautiful thing I ever heard in my life. I saw him at DBA. Yeah, people call that my, Yeah, that, that place, that place, there's magic. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's sacred to me. You know, yep. Um, yep. I saw him there, trombone shorty there. Uh, Glenn David Andrews, Paul Sanchez, David Tarkanovsky. I mean, yep. uh, New Orleans yep. is the most necessary city in America. Same it same. is the place where the American boast of the melting pot actually happened. Yep. You can yep. run into Vietnamese dudes walking around the Irish Channel that they have a New Orleans accent. Yeah. That are shippers, you know, that... Uh, that married into a Cajun family or shrimps with a Cajun family. Yep. Um, they're every kind of person and everybody's welcome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, get to New Orleans, I breathe easy, you know, because yep. uh, whatever defects of character you may have, believe me, New Orleans, there's somebody <laughs> who's worse. You know? And then uh, I also love Paris. So, uh -huh. and, um, uh, the television show that I act on, uh, Patriot, we shot our second season in Paris. And uh, uh, I just, I fell for it. And I, I realized why I love New Orleans so much. I mean, Paris is the mother of New Orleans. Exactly. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. New Orleans, sometimes if you squint your eyes, it's not like being in America. It's, no. it's like the Informed by the old world, Spanish architecture, French yep. architecture, um, you know, I mean, every uh, every iteration of African culture is present, every kind of music. Yep. I mean, the one really true American art form, jazz, you know, comes from New Orleans. Yep. Yeah. It started when Buddy Bolden walked out of uh, the bayou with a steel cornet trying to imitate the sounds of birds. Yeah. And he found this whole other otherness. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. that became just yeah, my yeah. favorite city in the world, Tony. Like I, I saw the the, uh, the words John Boutte and I was like, what? I, I've met him. I've hung out with him. My parents have met him. I love him. He is. Oh, He's so, yeah. Just absolutely as good as it gets. And uh, uh, just phenomenal human being on top of it. Uh, love yeah. him dearly. You know? yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I got to know him pretty well. Uh, cool. I was in the New York Biennial in 2008 and ah, okay. I, hired, you know, I hired John and Paul Sanchez and uh, yeah. uh, Leroy Jones, a phenomenal trumpet ah, player. So wow. Dude. Okay. And they yeah. played the opening of my installation now. Oh, and, uh, no. That's Maybe so the best night of my life in the art world. So yeah, sure. Yeah. What's oh, and Walter Wolfman, Washington. Yeah. Oh, I love Walter. Yeah. He's so good. Yes. Snooks Eaglin, um, uh, Andrews Osborne. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is a town so front loaded with musical talent. That, yeah. So. Yeah, and I mean, art, yeah. Music, and food and everything, right? And everything, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, music is the primary language of New yes. Orleans. You know, Absolutely. It's, uh, Absolutely. It's it's the place uh, I love being the most in the world. There in Paris, you know. Yeah, I'm with you. Chicago, you know. I, I have this. Uh, my DNA is. Uh, <laughs> yep. Headed into this town. I've tried to leave three or four times, and uh, <laughs> it's the center of my compass. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's good. There's so many good things that hook me back into Chicago all the time as well. Some really um, beautiful know, things. I like Los Angeles a little, you know. I've begun to find the what people like about it. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. one thing is, it is a culture that's built pretty much around the automobile, you know. So yeah. I don't drive, you know. So uh, it's hard for me to get around out there. They took my license away when I was 22, and. Uh, I ain't giving it back, you know. Right. Then, you know, you drive through well, one fucking house, you know, and uh, 
the label you want to put on TV and shit, and the Secretary of State writes you a handwritten letter telling you to get fucked, you'll never have a license again. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I consistently always have Uber or a driver, or, right. you know. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's a long time to not have a license for, wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, I would be afraid to get behind the wheel of a car now because I'm so easily distracted. Right. You right. know, uh, yeah. I'm driving down the street, I'd see a bird I've never seen before, or, uh, or a bug, or, you know, <laughs> a gorgeous woman, thing, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I'm no longer driving the car, you know. Right, right. Oh, like, my goodness. Oh, you know, this is what the nuns used to beat on me for, you know, it's like, uh, they tell my mother, oh, he brings his sketchbook and he starts drawing while we're trying to teach, and he goes off in the Tony world. It's like, well, fuck yes, I went off to the Tony world. I like it there. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Tony world, I can do whatever the fuck I want, you know. Mm-hmm. I, just yeah. tell, I just tell the art teachers, like, look, dude, do what you got to do. <clears throat> you can flunk me. You know, just, just leave me the fuck alone. And right. I'll sit over there, draw the pictures I want to draw. I'm not going to draw posters for the Pat Rally. I'm not going to do any of this rah rah for my school shit. Right. But um, you got to find me, find me. You know, fuck you. Who cares? You know. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta fly to your, your beat. You know. And, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so fun to talk to you, Tony. One, just because. Yeah, well, well, thank you so much. I was, um, was very yeah. happy to be here. Yeah. And I, I, I'll send you a bunch of images so that you know people don't just think yeah. of some. Totally. You know, a bad hat, you know. Yeah. On tip, uh, you know? Yep, absolutely. You you just sound like and you look like my people. You know what I mean? So that's yeah, nice. I think probably <laughs> I think probably we took the same second line once or twice. I yeah, I know. know. Yes. <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah. You know, hey, All I right. uh, I, I have one more question for you because it's a question I Certainly. ask you. I, yeah, I ask everybody this question at the end and um I, I'm we we sort of touched on some things already, but you we're talking we talk about moments and sparks in our life moments you know, sparks in our lives and I I'm curious for you is there we touched on some already but person place thing moment that you want to share with our listeners that really seats you in who you are today I can tell you exactly what that moment was. Okay. Uh, my father uh, raised eight children. He worked very hard, and uh, and he was a tough disciplinarian. We and believe me, we had plenty of uh, dust ups. Uh, and one day, I just told him, you know, he's like, "Why don't you do this art thing for a hobby?" And uh, I said, uh, "No," I said. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do full time. Yeah. He pulled the car over and he, he turned to me and he went, not one step backwards then. Which meant go all in. Yeah. Best thing he ever did for me. Heck yeah. You just gave me goosebumps. Yeah, that's a moment. Dang. That's you know what? What that's wonderful. Thank you, Dad. You know? Like Yeah, amen. Amen. You know. You know? He also used to say to me, whatever you do in life, make sure you're the only one who can do it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Your unique, beautiful way. Well, I, what a, this has been, I could talk to you for like forever. You're lovely and wonderful. Well, let's, do again, let's do it again sometime, okay? Yeah. Okay. I would love that. Yeah. And uh, we're going to put, um, so it's Tony Fitzpatrick, everyone. And we're going to put links to all the goodness and the show notes and some images and all that great stuff. And new puzzles, jigsaw puzzles are coming yeah, out. Yeah, new puzzles are coming out pretty quick. Yep. And, and you've got a book coming out. www.tonyfitzpatrick.co. Yeah, dot co. And, uh, and you're oh. also, you're on the, uh, you're on Amazon's Patriot as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, um, they have elected not to do a third season, but uh, the okay. first two are plenty entertaining and wonderful. We're, and we're not ever negating the idea that uh, we may someday possibly get to do a third season, maybe on another platform, maybe somewhere right. else. But, cool. 
Okay. Uh, just honestly, maybe one of the best things I've ever put on television. Ah, right on. We'll have to check it out. That's great. Wonderful. Oh. Yeah, well, cool. Tony, thank you so much for being right. uh, sharing your story. Right. That's awesome. Everyone. You're my, uh, you're my favorite maven. Hey, you're my favorite maven. Well, I can't say that. I got a lot of favorite mavens, but you're definitely one of them, babe. All right. <laughs> All right, dear. Be well. You too. Everyone, uh, that has been another episode of the Mavens Do It Better podcast. And here is another beautiful day on this big, beautiful sphere. Thank you. The original music on this podcast was created by Jesse Case.